All right, guys. Well, wind noise check. So I'm just kind of hanging out here in the backyard briefly in my chair. I just got back from town. And this is my vacation week. I have one this month, and then there's going to be one next month if I don't change it. If I change it, it's going to have to be a lot later in the year, like November or December, so I'm not so sure I want to do that. But either way, I thought I'd just kind of bring you up to speed with one of these just a little bit of everything videos, just tell you what's going on with different things and that sort of stuff. I don't normally hang out much in the yard doing nothing on a beautiful day like this, but I just, like I said, just got back and I'm going to get busy here doing some stuff in a little bit, but just thought I'd talk to you for a little while. So here's what's up. I'm just kind of spending this week trying to catch up on projects and stuff that I've just picked that, you know, through the through the preceding months, you know, on the weekends and a little bit in the evenings and things like that. So it's kind of hard to do that when you're getting up towards 50 years old and you're a little bit tired when you come home from work now and you don't always have the motivation. But this week I have the motivation. I've been sweating my jingle bells off working out here. So just kind of run through a few things, bring you up to speed. So that big brown patch right there, that's where, if you saw a preceding video or two back, I had a big pile of SHIT piled up there. I had some lawnmowers stuck in there and I had my engine hoist and I had some those ladders were there. I had some wheels. In other words, I had pretty much everything that was right there, that is right there, was over here. And I got looking at that video and I thought that's the biggest crap pile I've ever seen. That looks awful. It looks hideous. And it did. So I spent part of one day moving all that over here. I annexed I annexed a little bit of the yard here over, I cut that out with a mower to that tree over there and over because normally I just mow right across right here in a straight line but it's no problem because the people that lived here before I did they actually mowed even further out. They mowed like that second tree and then come back. Not sure why they did that because it's just more for them to mow because they got a guy that cuts this with a big giant bush hog thing on his tractor. So. But anyway, I wanted to do that. I didn't want to have it, you know, where I'd have to keep going around it with the mower like sitting out here. So that's going to be okay there. I'm probably going to, when I get that way where they sell them, I'll probably get one of those green, sort not lime green like that. But I think it may be actually, I was there today actually, unfortunately. But I think Walmart sells those dark green tarps. And I'll get one to kind of put over that just to keep the, just to keep the, you know, so I don't have to look at all that all the time. But I got everything I need over there I want to keep. I got some doors that I will, I'll probably end up parting those doors out. I'm gonna take the handles and the locks out of them and the vent windows and probably the glass. Because those are four door doors, obviously, and you can't sell those and you can't even give them away these days. Nobody wants them. So that's fine. I'll use what I need out of them and then just get the rest recycled. Nobody wants them. If you want them, let me know. But I got some 15 inch uh, GM wheels over there for something someday. Got my gardening supplies on the far side. Got my ramps. That thing there, that pile of stuff, that's going to be a compost pile. I don't know if any of y'all ever do a compost pile, but those are good for gardening. My grandparents used to always have a compost pile. I have good memories of compost piles. But let me move a little bit. Man, it's kind of hot right here in this spot. So I did that, so I've been spending a lot of time uh, getting things kind of straightened up around here. I keep my yard in that nice and neat all the time. I just That's just the way I am, and there's a lot of people like that. Along with, there's a lot of people who don't give a crap about how the yard looks like. There's a guy, people that live down the road when you go back into town and you make a couple turns down that way. There's some fairly modern houses on the left side of the street. And so. Most of them look nice, and then there's a couple bad apples that live down there. One of them just moved out. They're probably renting it or got foreclosed on. Wouldn't surprise me either way. But uh, they just, you know, it's a nice house, but they just had, he had a truck that he probably did construction with and had a trailer on it, and it just junk in the yard and toys and broken kid stuff and just every kind of redneck piece of junk stuff out there. 
you know, and it, it doesn't affect them. They don't think they, there's anything wrong with that. They think that's just fine. But anyway, they're out, so they're having to renovate that house down there. But I'm just not going to do that. You know, everybody has a right to keep their place like they want it. But, you know, that was that was too far for me right there, this deal. And this is going to be burned, by the way. That's why that's there. But uh, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not. I don't leave stuff just laying around. No way. That's just lazy. I don't care if the person's a good person, got a good heart, and pillar of the community. If you leave junk laying around, you're, you're lazy. Pick it up. So, anyway, so I've been out in this car, and I haven't got to drive this car very much lately, but I've been out in it today and got it out on the highway and drove it, and this is, this is one peach of a car. I will say that for it. As bad as this car ran when I got it, and as much stuff I had to do to it, it has been just rock solid. It runs great, drives good, rides good. Um... It's not used any oil, it's not leaked any oil, it's not leaked any water, it's not used any water, it's not used any transmission fluid since I put that transmission in it. Had to do that, I didn't plan on that, and it is what it is. Somebody had already damaged the transmission before I got this car, so. So it's just 100%, it's just a go anywhere car. It's very well behaved, it runs cool, it starts right up even when it's hot out. I've been in traffic, it idles good, so it does not have any bad habits. So I just drive it, and drive it, and drive it, and it's kind of, it's a good thing and a bad thing because when I drive, the more I drive it around, then the less time I spend doing things with these other two cars. So I kind of going to have to put this one to the side a little bit and just <coughs> slack off on that. So the Chrysler is about ready to hit the road. I'm going to spend some time just driving it locally. That's exactly the same thing I did with this Plymouth once I got it registered and legal and all like that. I just drove it around you know, a lot of shorter trips around here and just cruised it around and just kind of let anything that was going to break or if it was going to quit running, do it without me being miles away from home. So that's the deal. It seems to be running fine now. So uh, after I did that, I heard something creak over there after I heard, uh, had that distributor problem. But you see back behind me, I got a battery. I had to go buy another battery. I was playing, playing battery roulette, roulette, whatever you call it. And um, I had bought, for that, that Chrysler, I had bought a new interstate battery for it back last year. And uh, unbeknownst to me, because I didn't do my research like I should have, I bought a Group 24 battery, just the same as what these cars have in them. And so, I got doing some, I was thinking about buying a battery topper, but it's real hard to find a Group 27 flat top battery to put one of those old style battery toppers on. So in the process, that's when I did learn that that car is supposed to have a Group 27 battery in it, not a 24. This is a 27. They're about an inch or so longer, about the same height, but they are a little bit larger battery and 810 cranking apps. And that one came from Walmart and I shopped around online and it just seemed like it was the best deal. It's got three years free replacement, two years prorated, and uh, you know, it was $119, and that's about the going rate for a battery. They were a lot more expensive other places around, so, so I did that, so I got a battery, I'm going to put the battery back in it. I used that interstate battery in this one because it crapped out, finally. It was a recon battery, one of those reconditioned, ever, uh, they call it Kano power, but that's the one that comes from interstate battery for 50 bucks. It lasted four years. It was in Phil's Plymouth, his green one. And then I used it in this one for about the past uh, year or so. And finally it died. And died, it died. So, so I'm doing that. And I got another, spurged on another $21 box of those Raven gloves that I like. And I got some uh, freeze plugs for that dart over there. And somebody, I'm sure, is going to be inclined to tell me how I messed up on this because I went and bought six individual freeze plugs, and they are excellent quality. And you know that because you look at it, and this is what it says on it. Dorman, made in China. 
Anyway, they're 79 cents each, and uh, you get on the internet and ask people about freeze plugs for these, and people people give you these automated responses. Uh, you ask what size is freeze plugs goes on the side of a 318 or a 273, a small block Chrysler engine, and the first few people won't answer that. They won't just tell you that. I don't know if it's because they don't know it, but they don't tell you that. Their response is just go buy a kit. Just go buy a kit. Like I didn't ask you about a kit. I don't want to know about a kit. If I want a kit, I look up the kit and find it and go buy the thing. I don't want to know that. I ask what size freeze plugs go in the side of a 318, 273, 340, 360 engine. That's what I need to know. That's what I like to know. And then finally you read down about five or six responses and finally somebody will actually answer the question that was asked. So Thank goodness it wasn't me asking the question. I was just using the search feature on the, somewhere to, to find that out. But uh, they are inch and five eighths. I think it's 1.62 of an inch in like decimal point and stuff. But that just angers me so bad. And I, when I ask a question, which I rarely do on the internet anymore, in places like that, on these forums, I have to ask them. I have to head that off. I have, if it was something like that, I'd have to say, I need to know the size and the size only. I do not need to know about a kit. I know there are kits. I don't need a kit. I don't have all of them rotted out. We're not taking the engine out on the stand and building it. We're just putting some more freeze plugs in it that are rotted out right now. So that's it. That's all I need to know. Thank you. So anyway, I got that, that guy recommended some shellac to put them in with. I'm, I may do that and I may not. We'll see. But I always liked that stuff anyway and I didn't have any. And next thing is I have some paint here to touch up the paint on this here truck. <laughs> Beautiful paint job there. Aren't they? And I found the shield that goes under the left side gas tank. I thought I had that somewhere. I thought that it came with it and I dug it. Finally dug it out of that pile over there. I found that so I put that back on. And, I started digging into the brakes on that thing last week and I got the wheel off of it and that drum, it's got a huge drum on the rear of it and it would not budge. I tried everything I had available to me except just beating the crap out of it with a sledgehammer, which I didn't want to do that. But I tried everything to get that drum off and couldn't get it to budge. So I guess to get into the back brakes, which I'm going to have to because this one tries to lock up prematurely, like it's got something on it, maybe grease or oil or something. And that one's busted the brake cable, so I guess, you know, you have to get inside to refasten all that up when you replace it. So, I have to get them off. I have to drive it into town up here and just get them to pull the wheels off and break the drums loose for me. So, otherwise I have to buy a hundred and something dollar drum remover which i will not use but once maybe so i don't want to do that i can help it but in the meantime i'm going to do some sprucing up on this old truck i haven't been using it much lately and i like it and i don't want to lose my enthusiasm about it so i'm going to order i'm going to do a little bit of work on the floors and then i'm going to order a new rubber mat for the floor and i'm going to order a seat cover for it and redo the seat on it and in the meantime, before that all that gets here, I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor off and overhaul it because that carburetor is getting tired. It's a quadrijet. jet. It's an electronic quadrijet, jet and it's getting tired because it's got a little bit of a hesitation when you hit the gas, take off. It just kind of, you know, it's not, you can tell the accelerator pump's not working exactly right in it. And sometime back I was going somewhere picking something up and I had to pass somebody or I decided to pass somebody. So I, just went ahead and just punched it and went around them and I got about halfway around them and it started cutting out like the engine was running out of gas so it could be a couple different things it could be in the carburetor which I suspect it is it's probably got some pickup tubes on the air horn that have come out or it could be a fuel filter or it could be some kind of restriction in the line somewhere but it's got a new fuel tank on the left side there but it does not have a new one on the right and we're only running it off the left right there the switching the switch the uh what do you call that the tank selector switch is that not even in it somebody made you want to make sure they wouldn't accidentally run off that right tank over there so they just pulled the whole switch out and threw it away i guess so anyway that's going to be part of that it's uh what we're doing with that so anyway i got a lot of stuff going on and that's what i like to do on my vacation i like to just 
I like to just kind of hang out here and uh, just do stuff and keep things caught up and all that. I got a few small engine stuff to do too for myself. I've got an old mower that I want to get going again. And I've got uh, my edger and my backpack blower which need carburetor kits in them. I went down to Hill Lawn Mower down there in Huntsville. When I used to live down there, I used to use them a lot for stuff like that. And they, I went down there yesterday, drove all the way down there, and they disappointed me. I don't know what's happened with them, but those folks, they can't, they can't function. If you don't have a part number or a serial number or something like that, they cannot function. They don't, for being in business for small engines, that shocked me because, you know, if you tell them you got a, Briggs three and a half horsepower engine and you need a head gasket for it the guy's gonna stand there just stare at the computer and look at it like he didn't know what the hell he's even looking for yeah you know, I was thinking man you don't even know what you know a head gasket and finally somebody else came over and helped him and said oh what's this they all use the same one I kind of thought to myself I could have told you that dude but I got the head gasket but I didn't get any either of the other two carburetor kits so I'm gonna have to order those offline online off the internet and here's something I want to just give my own opinion about it makes people mad sometimes but you know here's the thing about those brick and mortar places like that that's getting that is more and more getting to be a thing of the past because it's not so much that we want to stop using people that resell parts like that but what's the point of it why should you if, it, if, if I can sit here in the comfort of my own house and not even have to get in the car why should I go to extra effort to go drive to somebody's business and get there and they don't have it and they can order it for more money than I could order it for and so I order it and wait at least a week for it to get here which it did last time I ordered the part. It took over a week. And then wait on them to call me and then have to get in the car and go back down there again to get it. Why do I want to do any of that? Why do I have to do that? See, we when in the 60s and the 70s and 80s, before there was e-commerce, we had to do that. It sounds nostalgic, but we had to do that. That's the only way you got stuff. You had to drive to the place, or you could, maybe you could call them, I don't know, but usually you had to drive there and figure out what it was, get them to order it, and then drive back two trips, you know. And you still didn't have the part for a week. So now, you know, I'm all for business, local business, but there are times that it just does not make sense to do that. Just to give some, either put up all that mumbo jumbo or give somebody or give somebody money just for handling something, which is what they do. I mean, I'm in that business. So I know it's a person, it's a middleman that you're paying a middleman to just all they do is they, they turn this way and get the parts, or whatever it is, the product, put it on their counter, and then when you get there, they turn this way and give it to you and you pay them money more than you would just doing it yourself. So that's my that's my position on stuff like that. You like it or don't like it, that's the way I feel about it. I don't want people to go out of business, but you know, e-commerce is e-commerce is a good thing. I mean, it is what it is, and if 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 business has to change some way to to accommodate that, then they're just going to have to. So. Because that's that's getting to be more of an outmoded way of doing things. I know, you know, I'm I'm with you guys. I mean, I, I know that it's it makes you feel good to be able to get in an old car and drive to an old time parts store, and you know, them not have a computer. But that's you know, it's just nostalgia. It's not really. It's getting more and more. Where it's not really viable these days. So. Okay, well, I think I'm going to get out here and pressure wash the house. I got me a new water hose to add on to my existing water hose so I can reach around the other side of the house from the one spigot I have. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start pressure washing the house while it's hot out and it's probably rain about 4 o'clock like it has every day. But until then, I'm going to hang out and have some fun. So hope you guys do too. See ya.